The clearest way into the universe is through a forest wilderness. When one tugs at a single thing in nature, he finds it attached to the rest of the world. The mountains are calling, and I must go and get their good tidings. Nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. The winds will blow their own freshness into you and the storms their energy. While cares will drop away from you like the leaves of autumn. Thousands of tired, nerve-shaken, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going into the mountains is going home. That wilderness is a necessity. The world's big and I want to have a good look at it before it gets dark. And into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. I only went out for a walk and finally concluded to stay out till sundown, for going out, I found, was really going in. I am losing precious days. I am degenerating into a machine for making money. I am learning nothing in this trivial world of men. I must break away and get out into the mountains to learn the news. In every walk with nature, one receives far more than he seeks. The sun shines, not on us, but in us. The world, we are told, was made especially for man, a presumption not supported by all the facts. Of all the paths you take in life, make sure a few of them are dirt. As long as I live, I'll hear waterfalls and birds and winds sing. I'll interpret the rocks, learn the language of flood, storm, and the avalanche. I'll acquaint myself with the glaciers and wild gardens and get as near to the heart of the world as I can. This grand show is eternal. It is always sunrise somewhere. The dew is never all dried at once. A shower is forever falling. Vapor is ever rising. Eternal sunrise, eternal sunset, eternal dawn and glooming, on sea and continents and islands, each in its turn, as the round earth rolls. The power of imagination makes us infinite. Between every two pines is a doorway to a new world. Handle a book as a bee does a flower. Extract its sweetness, but do not damage it.
We are now in the mountains, and they are in us, kindling enthusiasm, making every nerve quiver, filling every pore and cell of us. Going to the mountains is going home. Another glorious Sierra day in which one seems to be dissolved and absorbed and spent pulsing onward we know not where. Life seems neither long nor short and we take no more heed to save time or make haste than do the trees and stars. This is true freedom, a good practical sort of immortality. Everybody needs beauty, places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and cheer and give strength to the body and soul alike. The rivers flow not past but through us, thrilling, tingling, vibrating every fiber and cell of the substance of our bodies, making them glide and sing the trees wave and the flowers bloom in our bodies as well as our souls. And every bird song, wind song, and tremendous storm song of the rocks in the heart of the mountains is our song, our very own, and sings our love. No subject are our ideas more rapt and pitiable than on death. Let children walk with nature. Let them see the beautiful blendings and communions of death and life, their joyous inseparable unity. As taught in woods and meadows, plains and mountains, and streams of our blessed star. And they will learn that death is stingless indeed, as beautiful as life, and that the grave has no victory, for it never fights. Going to the woods is going home. Most people are on the world not in it, have no conscious sympathy or relationship to anything about them, undiffused, separate, and rigidly alone like marbles of polished stone, touching, but separate. Another glorious day, the air as delicious to the lungs as nectar to the tongue. There is a love of wild nature in everybody, an ancient mother love showing itself, whether recognized or not, and however covered by cares and duties. Earth has no sorrow that earth cannot heal. How glorious a greeting the sun gives the mountains. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. Everybody needs beauty as well as bread. There is not a fragment in all nature, 
for every relative fragment of one thing is a full harmonious unit in itself. Hidden in the glorious wildness like unmined gold. Nothing truly wild is unclean. I don't like either the word hike or the thing. People ought to saunter in the mountains, not hike. Do you know the origin of that word saunter? It's a beautiful word. A way back in the Middle Ages, people used to go on pilgrimages to the Holy Land. And when people in the villages through which they passed asked where they were going, they would reply, A la Sante Terre, to the Holy Land. And so they became known as Saint Terre Heirs, or Saunterers. Now these mountains are Holy Land, and we ought to saunter through them reverently, not hike through them. When we contemplate the whole globe as one great dewdrop, stripped and dotted with continents and islands, flying through space with other stars, all singing and shining together as one, the whole universe appears as an infinite storm of beauty. We all travel the Milky Way together, trees and men. Few places in this world are more dangerous than home. Fear not, therefore, to try the mountain passes. They will kill care, save you from deadly apathy, set you free, and call forth every faculty into vigorous enthusiastic action. Not blind opposition to progress, but opposition to blind progress. Yet how hard most people work for mere dust and ashes and care, taking no thought of growing in knowledge and grace never having time to get in sight of their own ignorance. Who wouldn't be a mountaineer? Up here, all the world's prizes seem nothing. I care to live only to entice people to look at nature's loveliness. Spring's work is going on with joyful enthusiasm. One should go to the woods for safety, if for nothing else. One day's exposure to mountains is better than a cartload of books. Every hidden cell is throbbing with music and life every fiber thrilling like harp strings. Long, blue, spiky-edged shadows creep out across the snowfields, while a rosy glow, at first scarce discernible, gradually deepened and suffused every mountaintop, flushing the glaciers and the harsh crags above them. This was the Alpen glow, to me the most impressive of all the terrestrial manifestations of God. At the touch of this divine light, the mountains seemed to kindle to a rapt, religious consciousness, and stood hushed like devout worshippers waiting to be blessed. God has cared for these trees, saved them from drought, disease, avalanches, 
in a thousand tempests and floods, but he cannot save them from fools. No synonym for God is so perfect as beauty. Whether as seen carving the lines of the mountains with glaciers, or gathering matter into stars, or planning the movements of water, or gardening, still, all is beauty. These temple destroyers, devotees of ravaging commercialism, seem to have a perfect contempt for nature, and instead of lifting their eyes to the god of the mountains, lift them to the almighty dollar. How narrow we selfish, conceited creatures are in our sympathies. How blind to the rights of all the rest of creation. What a psalm the storm was singing and how fresh the smell of the washed earth and leaves and how sweet the still small voices of the storm. Wander a whole summer if you can. Time will not be taken from the sum of your life. Instead of shortening it, it will definitely lengthen it and make you truly immortal. <laughs>